Other day, well, flight was supposed to resume tomorrow, but the considerable discussions are still taking place with various states because people aren't completely sure if this is the right thing to do. We've seen vociferous uh, remarks being made by states like Maharashtra or Tamil Nadu, even West Bengal, saying this is not the right time to open up flights. So those discussions are going to be continuing. And remember what the key issue is here is, it's not about the possibility of your getting infected by your on the plane. It's actually the bigger risk of the transmission of the virus from one place to the other, which is why it's somewhat interesting that the states that are complaining, including states like Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu, which actually are number one and number two in, the, in terms of the total case count. But look at what's happening elsewhere. And as we keep hitting new records every day with coronavirus cases, the real cause of concern is, yes, Maharashtra has its 2,600 and Delhi has its 500 and Tamil Nadu has its 700, but other states are now starting to come up. The growth rate in Bihar, the growth rate in Karnataka has been in double digits for four or five days. Just today, we've seen 54 new cases in Uttarakhand, a state that had had barely 250 cases till now. So it is starting to spread and that's the reason why, especially in states which haven't had the coronavirus, you need to be thinking about testing, about contact tracing and about quarantines and that's why some of the concerns around these flights. Let's quickly bring you up to date with all the latest stories at the side. A day before domestic flights resume operations in India, the Health Minister has issued guidelines for domestic travel by air, train or bus. The Arogya Setu app will be mandatory for all passengers, irrespective of whether they are taking a flight, a train or a bus. Announcements about COVID-19 and precautionary measures will have to be made regularly at airports, stations and bus terminals. The government has asked authorities to ensure regular sanitization and disinfection of these places. After thermal screening, only asymptomatic passengers will be allowed to board but will be asked to monitor themselves for 14 days for any symptoms. Those with symptoms at the time of boarding will be taken to the nearest COVID-19 health facility for tests. Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee on Saturday said West Bengal will urge the centre to postpone resuming of domestic flight services at Kolkata and Bagdogra airports by a few days as the state handles the damage caused by Cyclone Amban. The flight services are scheduled to begin on May 25th. Didi said she'd ask the Chief Secretary to request the Civil Aviation Ministry to defer the services at Kolkata airport to May 30th and at Bagdogra airport to May 20th. Bengal has already urged the centre to put off the movement of special trains till May 27th. India reported more than 6,000 cases of COVID-19 for the third straight day in 24 hours, taking the tally of infections to 1,31,868, according to the data released by the Union Health Ministry on Sunday. In another biggest single-day spike in the number, 6,767 new COVID-19 cases were reported in the last 24 hours as 147 people succumbed to deadly respiratory disease, Health Ministry dashboard showed. On Sunday, there were 54,440 recoveries against 51,783 from Saturday, taking the recovery rate to 41.28%. Maharashtra Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre on Sunday said it was wrong to impose the lockdown suddenly and now it cannot be lifted all at once. Amid the rising number of COVID-19 cases in Maharashtra, Thakre also said there was a need to be extra cautious during the upcoming monsoon. He said if the lockdown is lifted suddenly, it will be a double whammy for the people. Thakre, whose party Shiv Sena parted ways with long-term ally BJP last year, said though the union government has been of little help, he would not indulge in any political mudslinging. While speculation is on regarding the resumption of international travel in the country, the government has issued guidelines for such arrivals. All passengers arriving in India by air, land or water will have to give an undertaking at the time of boarding that they will undergo 14 days of quarantine, 7 days of paid institutional quarantine, followed by 7 days of home isolation. Passengers may be allowed to isolate themselves at home for all 14 days in case of exceptional reasons like pregnancy, a death in the family, passengers with children below 10 years, depending on the receiving state. All passengers will need to have the Arogya Setu app and passengers will have to fill a self-declaration form in flight, ship or bus and hand over a copy of the same to officials at the destination airport, seaport or land port. 
American author Pearl S. Buck once wrote, a hungry man can't see right or wrong, he just sees food. Chaotic scenes were seen at a railway station in Delhi and UP's Mughal Sarai as hungry migrant workers on board the Shramik special trains were seen taking away bottles of drinking water and food from the unattended counters at the station. These heartbreaking videos were posted on social media where workers were seen taking as much food as they could carry and some even snatching from others. No railway officials or police officials were seen nearby to restore order. The New York Times has devoted Sunday's entire front page to a long list of names of people who have died in the coronavirus pandemic. The names and brief descriptions culled from obituaries from around the country to fill six columns under the headline, US deaths near 1 lakh, an incalculable loss, with a subheadline reading, they were not simply names on a list, they were us. According to data from Johns Hopkins University, more than 96,000 people have died of COVID-19 in the United States.